All right, so how many, how many of you in the room are React developers? Like you do React on a regular basis. Okay, so how many of you are Angular developers? Okay, I'm going to tell you right now that the vast majority of what I talk about today uh, is applicable directly on the Angular side too. It's, it's called Progressive Web Apps with React only because the application I'm using happens to be in React. But like past the first three minutes of the talk, it's applicable across the board to whatever you want to do. Um, okay, how many of you actively build Progressive Web Apps right now? I've got three, okay. And I have to remember who, because when my demo breaks eventually, I have to know who I can point to that can help me out. So you, do, you know what you just signed up for by raising your hand. Okay. Um, so my name's John. Uh, I'm a JavaScript guy. I do a lot of React stuff. Um, I'm also a Pluralsight author. How many of you do Pluralsight? If you do not actively have a Pluralsight subscription, let me know, I've got like 30 day trial cards that I'm happy to give out and you can play around with. Um, okay, so I am also from here, um, which I'm more specifically from right here, like in the middle. Because normally when I say I'm from the States, people assume I'm either from here or from here. And they forget or don't realize that there's like this big massive expanse in the middle. So I'm like as far from either of those spots as I could possibly get. Um, but thank you for having me out here. Um, I've, I've been in Lithuania for not even 24 hours and it's been pretty awesome. Uh, so I appreciate it. All right, here we go. We're going to get started. We're at a conference. I don't know if you guys realized this, but I'm filling you in now. Uh, if you were too late at the Sky Bar last night, like, you're here. Um, how many of you have looked at this today? Right, most because you got to know where to go next, right? And chances are that when you walk out of the room, you're going to look at this again, because now you have to pick one of these talks to go to, right? So I go to a lot of conferences. And the struggle sometimes, now I'm not very familiar yet with this event, you guys might be more fortunate than you think, um, is oftentimes when I go to get this, I end up getting the dinosaur game. How, how many of you play the dinosaur game? Right, uh, how many of you have no idea what I'm talking about, about like a game? Okay, so we'll come back to the dinosaur game in a minute, but... Um, Right, but, but I want the dinosaur game, I, I want the schedule, right? And so one of the problems we have with a web page, and this is going to sound weird when I say it, and I understand that. One of the problems we have with a web page is that the web page doesn't work when you're not connected to the internet, right? Uh, so let that sink in for just a second. That seems very obvious, but at the same time, that's a problem. Uh, and so... We have all kinds of ways of fixing that, uh, one of them being you can have, have an app that you now have to get installed in the app store and you download it and you do all of that stuff or, or you hand out paper. That's equally an option, um, but then I lose it immediately and now I have no way of getting that back. Uh, so one of the problems that a progressive web app is trying to solve is this. And so what I'm going to focus on today, because I only have... 45 minutes now, um, is we're going to focus mostly on this problem. I'm going to show you a bunch of other stuff, but we're going to focus mostly on this. How can I make my web page work when I don't have internet access? Uh, okay. So progress progressive web apps solve this problem. Okay. So there's, there's a couple of things that define a progressive web app. I'm going to talk about this real quick, and then we're going to, like, do some code. So... <coughs> Progressive web apps ultimately need to be reliable, which means when you're not online, they still work, which is still weird to me. Um, they need to be fast. I'm not going to talk as much about this, but the idea is there is a lot of people who are not on uh, broadband, like LTE type internet. A lot of people still are on dial-up, or they want you want your app to be as fast as possible, which means 
like don't download a three meg JS bundle in order to start your application, things like that. Um, engaging, so let me ask you a question. This sitting right in front of me is a laptop and you know this, I assume, but I have a laptop right here. Um, how many of you, when you go to, to get on a web page, prefer to use this over the laptop? Right, I generally do, and I'm, I'm actually kind of weird. Um, even when I'm at work, I'm sitting in front of a laptop with two screens, and I will stop what I'm doing, I'll pull my phone out, and I'll, get, I'll Google it, whatever, on my phone, just because, I don't know, I'm weird. Um, so what, what this means is your website, your, your thing, needs to work as well here as it does here. Okay. So let's talk about something for a second. I'm going to show you a couple things. All right. So I have a web application. And I'm going to walk you through. Those of you who don't know React, I'm just going to walk you through it real quick. And then we're going to demo it and we're going to play around. So if you can't read this, well, I can't really fix it any more than I have. So I'm sorry. Um, also, yeah, I tend to talk really fast when I get going. And so at any moment, just like yell at me and say, slow down or ask me questions. Either way, it's fine. Um, okay, so I have in this application an index.html that basically has nothing in it. It has this. And what this means is that I'm going to pull down a script and I'm going to inject my app into my root. You don't need to worry about much more than that. Okay, so I have a very, very simple app. And the reason I have a very simple app is because we want to focus on implementing a progressive web app, not all of the, the complication of a very complicated web application. So this is very simple. I have a constructor. When I load it up, I add to my state this empty array. There's nothing in the array whatsoever. When I click a button, I'm going to do an Axio. Who knows what Axios is? Okay, excellent. If you don't know what Axios is, Axios is just a package that is used to go download stuff over HTTP. Like it's, it's the replacement for fetch or, or whatever. So axios.get, I'm going to go pull some, da some, some data from a, a JSON file and I'm going to add it to books. After a thought, I'm adding a second just so that you can, otherwise it happens too fast and then everybody misses. And I'm going to render a thing. So in React, we have this weird thing. Actually, I guess Angular does it, where all of our code is like in one file, which you can like or hate. I don't care. Um, but we've got all our JavaScript and all of our HTML all like mixed together, which I used to hate. And now I'm just used to it, so it's fine. Uh, I, just, I just gave in eventually and said, that's the way the world works now. So, um, so I've got my HTML. This is library, and then I loop over books, I spit out the title, the author, the genre, done. All right. So, I already have it running, so I'm going to go over to my website and look, ha, huh, I have this thing. What's going to happen when I click refresh? I'm going to get books. Thank you, Bill. There we go. That's all it is. Okay, that is the entire application. So the vast majority of this talk is going to center on this thing down here. How many of you on a daily basis use Chrome DevTools? Okay, excellent. Um, that is the right answer, by the way. How many of you have ever ventured past the third tab? Right, okay, a lot of excellent. So I'm going to spend quite a bit of time talking about like stuff over here because a lot of people don't play around with a lot of the stuff over here, and that's the main point of what we're going to do. The console is obvious, right? All of this stuff. So, I have a very simple web application that does very simple things, but yet, when I click this button right here, my whole browser is now offline. And I'm going to hit 
Refresh. And what's going to happen? No, no, close. Not yet. Spoiler alert, that's coming. Um, so, I, right, I get loading and then I get nothing because down here at the bottom, it tries to go get data.json and it fails. What happens? Now's your big moment. What happens when I hit refresh up here? Now, in fairness, I call them both the same thing. I can understand the confusion. Okay. I get the dinosaur game. Now, what the dinosaur game basically is, have you ever played Flappy Bird? Right, that's the idea, right? You just try and jump over the little cactuses as they come through. I have a 12-year-old son who has a PlayStation and an Xbox and an iPhone that has lots of games on it, and he will turn off his Wi-Fi on his laptop <laughs> so he can play the dinosaur game. That, anyway, um... So, right. And for some reason, my Chrome browser has started doing this, and I don't, but I don't care. So I'm going to go back online, I'm going to hit refresh. And of course, <sighs> what if I do that? Localhost 3000, all right, inspect. Boom, all right, hopefully I won't have to do that like over and over and over again. Um, where was that network? Okay. So none of this should surprise you. That's like how the internet works, right? You go offline, nothing functions, done. So we're going to talk progressive web apps to kind of fix that problem. We're going to come all the way down to the audits tab. Now, how many of you have heard of Lighthouse? So Lighthouse, many of you, excellent. Lighthouse was a tool, and I use the term was, a tool that was a plug into Chrome that would audit your website for you. It is no longer called Lighthouse. It is no longer a plug-in into Chrome. It is now built in. Um, and the only reason I say any of that is because when you click on audits, you get a Lighthouse icon that would make no sense whatsoever if you didn't know that it used to be called Lighthouse. Um, and so what audits does for you is this is a very cool tool and you should be using it regardless of whether you're doing progressive web apps or not. It will look at your website and it will tell you whether or not you are um, using best practices. It'll audit your SEO. It audits accessibility. It does all kinds of stuff for you that otherwise might not be done. <coughs> we are going to focus today on the progressive web app piece. And so I'm going to click Run Audit. And what Run Audit, the first thing Run Audit's going to do is it's going to change me to a iPhone, or a Pixel 2, or whatever. And so if you don't know you can do this, you can change your device types up here in, so that you can see how it will work on different devices. OK, so I'll turn that off. Um, so I'm going to click Audit, and we're going to see what happens. I guess he's going to do a whole bunch of stuff. You'll see the dinosaur game flash up here for a second, and then you need to enable JavaScript. And I'm going to come back with a score of 50 which may or is not zero, for the record. I have a son who's in college. Um, no, 50 is still bad, even for that. Um, OK, so, so, OK. Let's look at the stuff that passed, and then I'll tell you what failed. OK, page load is fast enough on 3G. I seriously hope so, considering the size of the application that we're talking about. Um, if it didn't load fast on 3G, we have problems. But page load is fast enough on 3G. Ultimately, um, that's something you, for a real application you want to look at. We do use HTTPS, which is great. I didn't really do anything to make that happen, but the local host thing just kind of does it for me. Um, contains some content when JavaScript is not available. I, I need to ask this question because this will be important in a minute. Do I have any like security professionals in the room? Anybody who does like security? Or you're so secure you don't want to tell me <laughs> that that's what you do. Okay, I have one. I thought I saw your hand, but I was looking in the wrong. Okay, I have one guy. Um, sometimes people actually navigate the web with JavaScript turned off because, I don't know if you know this, the web is not a safe place. And so we, we try and, and um, so what you want is your website to do something when JavaScript is turned off. Now, what does ours do? Because I didn't really talk about that. If I go back to index.html, look at this. That's all I do. 
You need to enable JavaScript to run this app. Done. One thing that might make sense if you're building like a schedule or something is you can just put a hard-coded version of it up here and then say if you want the actual website, turn JavaScript on. So it'll let you know if you're doing that. Um, and then content is sized correctly. I'm not going to talk too much about the responsiveness. That's, that's going to come down into this. Uh, it's going to change the size and see if it moves stuff around. Who uses uh, Bootstrap? Okay, who, um, what other package? Eh, there's all kinds of them. So the responsive side of this we've been talking about for years, right? And so I'm not as concerned with making your website responsive. Use a thing like Bootstrap or something. It kind of does it for you. Um, let's look at the stuff that failed. Now, if I, haven't, if I hadn't given you the opening, like the introduction, this first one looks dumb. Does not respond when a 200 went offline. A website should never respond with a 200 when you're offline because 200 means it worked. Like I asked for data, I got data. It shouldn't do that when you're offline, right? Um, and then let's look at number four. Does not register a service worker. So let's talk about this. Because this is ultimately the vast majority of, of what we're going to talk about. Does not register a service worker. Does not respond with 200 when offline. Let's talk service workers. OK. Important question. Who knows what a web worker is? Many of you. So a web worker. I'm not going to call on you. I'm just going to, I should. I'm not going to. OK, a web worker, I will call on people in a minute. A web worker is, is something that you can spin up over beside your web page and will execute stuff. Um, at, very simply, that's essentially what it is. Um, if you're interested in things like web workers and atomics and things like that, uh, Jeffrey Strauss is giving a talk on multi-threaded JavaScript later. He'll dig into this. Because this is not what we're talking about. Um, so service workers are not web workers, but the basic, like the very basic idea is similar. Service worker is something that sits over here and does some stuff outside of your browser. Here's the scary thing. So security guy, tell me if this sounds horrible to you. We're going to install something that's going to hijack all of the HTTP traffic coming out of the browser for this web page. And it's going to do whatever it wants with it. I could request something, and it could say, no, I'm going to go get this other thing over here instead, pull it in, and send it back to the web page as if it was the thing I asked for. I could post my username and password, and the service worker could say, hey, that's awesome. I'm going to send that information over here and over here, all of these types of things. So, um, so service workers are, are scary, but yet the only way this whole thing works. So we kind of have to work in the middle. So one of the requirements, you'll notice one of the requirements we passed is progressive web apps must, and must is a suggestion, it's not enforced, but it should be, must use HTTPS. And part of the reason for that, you're nodding your head, so you're in agreement on this. The reason for that is you don't want one of these being messed with, ultimately. Okay. So the way, the way service workers work, there's two pieces of code, and we're, we'll talk through them, and then I'll show it to you. So the first one is in your index.html, you need to register your service worker. And the first thing that might be a red flag, so Bill, pay attention, if service worker is in navigator, I'm going to register a service worker, which means that if you're on a slightly older browser, this isn't going to work at all. Immediately off the bat, we're not going to be able to do this. So if service worker happens, we're going to register it, and it's going to go pull our service worker, which we've called offline.js. Um, and then we're going to register it. It's going to be ready. It's going to be great. Um, we're going to install this. Uh, we're just going to install. The first thing we do when we install, check this out. I'm going to open a cache, and I'm going to go pull a bunch of stuff. Very first thing. I'm going to pull index.html, my bundle, and my data.json, and I'm going to cache it right away. And then the important part of this whole thing is a piece of code that says, hey, whenever a fetch happens, Every time a fetch happens, I'm going to do something other than the fetch. <coughs> so 
I'm going to check, and if I have a cache, if it's already cached, I'm just going to return my response. Otherwise, I'm going to do the fetch, return my response. Otherwise, I'm going to do the fetch, and then I'm going to cache it. That's a service worker. Okay. Let's play with this. Okay, so if I go to offline.js, what you'll see is all the stuff we just talked about. I've got a build stuff, it's my cache name, and we'll look at that in a second, and then I'm going to go do a whole bunch of things. Let's come back over here. Look at what just happened. Because it refreshed automatically, because that's what happens. Um, down here at the bottom, I've installed the service worker. I've activated the service worker. It's ready. It's registered. So I'm going to refresh my page. And it worked, which is, should not be a surprise to you. Um, Hold on. I'm going to do it again so you guys can see this. Clear, refresh. OK. Because, yeah. So notice, when I first refresh my page, if those of you who are behind this podium, which is very poorly placed for this particular demo, you'll see four things. Offline.js, index.html, data.json, and bundle.js. And they have a little icon next to them, a little gear. And what that means, what the little gear means is the service worker went and got that. So immediately you can see the difference. Now, when I hit refresh, notice data.json came back. I went and got data.json. If you look all the way over here, from service worker. So there's no size, there's no nothing. It just said, hey, the service worker just sent it back to you. Which is great, because when I click offline like this, what's going to happen when I click this button? Still worked. What happened last time I clicked the button? Nothing worked, right? What happens when I hit refresh? So I'll pull this up. I'm going to hit refresh. Of course. Because my thing crashed. It didn't crash. What in the world? Hold on. It is. And I've done this twice this week already. And it always... Okay, inspect... Network, refresh, yay, I click offline, I hit refresh, it goes and gets my stuff, I hit refresh, and it worked, okay. <sighs> Just turn it off, turn it back on again, everything works. But, so, right, we'll get, we'll get to the whole whether you should actively be using progressive web apps in a minute. Um, but notice, localhost, this is what should have happened a minute ago, localhost is right here, came back from service worker because we cached index.html. So now I'm scared to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to close my browser. I'm going to open it again. I'm going to hit that. I'm going to go, and it still works. Hold on. I'm going to open a new window. I'm going to inspect. I'm going to go offline first. I'm going to paste it, and it still works. So this is where it becomes a little scary or awesome, depending on who you are, because the service worker, when I closed my browser, didn't go anywhere. Right? It stayed there, and it will stay there forever. And so every time I go to localhost 3000, that service worker is there, that service worker is doing its thing, and it's going to return back anything that it has cached. 
So let's look at what it has cached. So back over to the application tab. So I, uh, so service worker, first of all, is right here. I have service workers registered. So anytime you can go out to your application tab and you can see whether a website has a service worker registered and you can click on offline.js and it'll show you the code for the service worker. The other thing that is here is you can come down to the cache storage down here at the bottom and there's a, there's a build stuff cache. And I'm going to click on that and then you'll see all of the stuff. So there's my data.json, my index.html, everything that's cached and stored there. And then I can click in data.json and see there's my stuff. Okay. Excellent. What happens when I come back on, uh, no, stop it. I hit refresh, everything works. What happens when I come back over to my code, I go into data.json and I change this to just war. I change my data. What's gonna happen when I hit refresh? It's still war and peace. So this is a problem that we'll talk about here in just a minute. Because what am I doing? I'm caching everything and I never go check again, which is probably not the best way to do it, but it's easier to demo that way so that you understand what's going on. I will fix that in just a second. But first. Oh, hold on. Before I do the thing that I'm about to do, I'm going to go back to audit and I'm going to run an audit again. It's doing all this stuff. Notice you didn't get the dinosaur game this time. I'm at 73%. Now, unlike the 50%, my son who is in college will attempt to tell me that 73% is fine. Because 73% is a passing grade. At least for us it is. Um, so it's, it's not a great passing grade, but it passes. This is not, a not good enough for us. Notice it's yellow and not green. So let's look at what is failing now. User will not be prompted to install the web application. So here's the other thing about progressive web apps. It's one thing to say, when I go to my browser, I pull up the schedule, and I go to the, the schedule page, it works every time. But I still have to pull up the browser, right? I don't want to have to pull up the browser. I want this thing on my desktop so I can just click on it. It's going to come up. It's going to work. So that's what the... Um, so notice it says, no manifest was fetched. So manifest is, uh, manifest is broken. So let's talk about a manifest. OK, so somebody tell me, without talking about technology at all, wh what is a manifest? Like, what, is, what does the word mean? Or where would you use that word? I'm curious. Actually, I'm curious. Politics. Politics. Logistics. Shipping. Logistics. Is what? What's the Lithuanian word for me? Okay, so it's pretty much the same thing, right? Because I, it's funny. I was in um, I was in Bulgaria two days ago doing this talk. And, um, and I asked the same question because I asked what a manifest was and everybody kind of just looked at me. And I said, I don't know what the Bulgarian word is for it. And they're like, it's manifest. Um, so, so it's the same, right? So it's, it's very close. It's manifestus. Is that what you said? Okay, excellent. I know one Lithuanian word. You guys heard it. Uh, I, I'll learn more over the course of the next 24 hours. But I have one down. Um, so shipping and logistics, right. So ultimately, when you're shipping something, you have, you have a manifest that, that gives details about what that shipment is. Is that, is that fair? Do you agree with that? Um, it's the same thing here. All a manifest is is basically something that the browser can take, and it tells it a little bit about the application so that it could use it appropriately. So. A manifest describes your web page in an application context. So it, it basically describes a web page as an application. Like if we were going to make an application out of this, um, we're going to, in our index.html, you even have like a, like where you would normally have like style sheet here. 
manifest, and we're going to install the manifest. Okay, basically it's just, hey, if this was an application, here would be the short name for it, library. Here would be the, um, the colors. Here's the startup URL, index.html. So when, when you load this thing, just navigate to index.html or wherever it is we want to go. Um, so let's look at that. With any luck, it'll just work. And I won't have broken everything. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go to application, and I'm going to click on manifest, and I'm going to hit refresh, and it still isn't there. Uh, am I off I'm not offline, but it's still not there. Why is it still not there? Yes, it's cached. Remember, I have a service worker that's cached everything, and when I update things, it won't let me go fix it. Right, so the first thing I have to do, there's two things we can do here. I can go to service workers, and I can unregister a service worker. So back over in my, in my application tab, I can unregister it. What I generally like to do is there's, there's a clear storage where I can just like scroll down to the bottom and just say get rid of everything. Um, and then I'm going to refresh. I got a new service worker. This is, I hate it today. Okay, it's all right. We'll be fine. I'm going to go back to my application. There's my manifest. I'm going to save it. I'm going to come here. I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to npm start it. And it's going to work. And then I'm going to go back to my service worker. I'm going to unregister it. I'm going to refresh. And now I have a manifest. OK. It's just sometimes it takes a second. Oh which is part of, part of the point. OK, build stuff library demo is the name. Index.html, I've got some colors. I also now have a link over here on the right side of my page that says add to home screen, which is going, how many of you have apps installed in Chrome? Right, so if I come here and I go to apps, I have apps. I've got Postman and I've got some other things installed. TweetDeck. If I click Add to Home Screen, it's going to say, hey, do you want to use it at any time? I'm going to click Add. I'm going to click Create. Notice I've got an icon that was described in the manifest. I'm pointing at my laptop screen. That doesn't help you. Described in the manifest right here, I've got an icon. Notice the icon is the same. Um, and I'm going to click Create. And now it's going to sit here in my apps. And so it takes whatever's in the manifest, generates an app out of it, and drops it here. So it does that all automatically. Now what this means is if I double click on this, I have an app that's, that's there forever. OK, let's run one more audit. And then I'm, we're going to conduct a social experiment. Um, because Bill has to report back to his boss on something. And I want to give him some information he can use. So, 92, yes, it is green now, and I am comfortable with that. The only thing I'm not comfortable with is the error. So if my son, back to my son, if he came home and he said, 92 is a perfectly acceptable grade, I, yes, I can't argue with that. Um, does not redirect HTTP traffic to HTTPS. So I'm not redirecting. I don't care about that so much for a demo. Redirect to HTTPS. <coughs> so... One thing we want to do is, to finish this out, we're going to deploy this. Um, so how many of you use, oh, so this whole thing is out on GitHub, um, PRDC PWA. It's out here on GitHub. You can play with it. You can get to it. I will, I'll tweet out my slides, and then you can, um, you can get to it. 
So there's a thing called GitHub Pages. How many of you have heard of GitHub Pages? So GitHub Pages is a package, excellent, so I'm not going to talk about it at all, uh, except that I will tell you this. GitHub Pages is a, is a package that will take your GitHub repository and publish it out to pages.github.io slash, what, or not pages, Jonathan F. Mills, so my .github.io slash whatever my repository is. Um, so we kind of install it. One thing you have to change, and I'm just going to tell you this and you can Google it later. I have to set my home page and then I have to set the framework for, for my service worker. But here is a QR code and a website. On your phone, go to this web page. And tell me, one, don't play around with it too much yet. Tell me, social experiment for Bill, how many of you are prompted to install to your desktop? Okay, I have two. There will be some of you, I just for the record, those of you who do not get prompted, there are people who are raising their hands. So it did work. Who did not get prompted to install it? What kind of phone do you have? What kind of phone do you have? Okay, iPhone, iPhone, so I've got a couple of Androids that it didn't do it on, and I've got a, did anybody have an iPhone that worked? Did you catch that? Uh, there are no iPhones that worked. Okay, if you're on an iPhone, I'm not lying to you, go to, of all places, share, add to home screen. Makes no sense at all why it would be under share, but if you go to share, add to home screen, it'll add it to your home screen. Um, also, now that you've all done it, quick security tip, never take something that some random guy puts up on a screen and says install this to your desktop with no um, security of an app store at all. Anybody have a Microsoft phone? I don't know if you guys know this, but Microsoft makes phones. Um, this will never work. Microsoft, uh, so you can imagine, here's, I mean, this is a very serious uh, thing. If you can install apps to your desktop or to your phone this way, how does Apple make a lot of their money? The App Store. So does Google. So does Microsoft. Well. No, Microsoft makes a little bit of money through their app store. They are very resistant to this. They're finally coming around and they're finally allowing it by hiding it in the share menu, but it's there. Um, and so th there's some resistance on the part of the, the app stores to allow this kind of functionality to happen. Okay, I promised you, because I have 12 minutes, that we would do one more thing. I'm going to go back to my offline.js. Okay, here's how offline works. I'm caching everything, and then I say, hey, if my cache matches, then I'm going to send the response back. Let's do this. Let's comment that out. And let's come down here to my fetch. So here I've got my fetch. If fetch crashes. I'm going to catch it. And then I'm going to return my cached response. Fair? Okay, I'm going to save this. I'm going to come back over and I'm going to tell you it will work after I clear everything out. I'm going to hit refresh. I'm going to go to my service workers. I'm going to go to um, Offline JS and it's commented out, so it worked. Okay, I'm gonna hit refresh here. I get my stuff. I'm gonna go offline. I'm gonna refresh. Okay, wait. Before I do that, notice down at the bottom. I'm just gonna describe it to you. Way at the bottom. Well, here, let me do it again so it's up higher. Oh, I went offline. Okay, so I have a data.json 
from service worker. But notice I have another one. Because service worker returned it, but it also then went and got it. So now this is behavior we didn't see before. Um, and so, if I go back to my VS Code, here I have just war. If I go back to my data.json, and I say, and peace, I save it, I hit refresh, now I get the whole thing, so now it works. If I go offline and I hit refresh, it still works. If I change it offline, it didn't work. Why? Because it cached it, right? But the minute I come back online, now it updates. So that's more in line with how, yes? Right. Um, there are packages out there that you can use, uh, especially if you use, um, uh, well, right. So there's packages out there. I don't want to get, that will do a lot of this stuff. Um, create React app. If you do React, you use a Create React app. Um, if you use React and do not use Create React app, you should be. Um, Facebook, the, 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 like, the people who do it, also use Create React app, so it's not too good, uh, or you're not too good to use it. I started a new job, and, and the team I was working with, I asked them if they use Create React app, and they said, no, we're beyond that. <laughs> I said, no, you're not. Um, I don't know why. To your point, there's packages that do this stuff. Use the packages that do it. Um, okay, so, but this is still new-ish enough that, that I haven't found one that I really like yet, and, and I want to kind of go through the mechanics of it, but. <laughs> get from cash or, some, oh. Um, I, don't, I haven't looked into it too much for that specific use case. Uh, I would expect very rapidly um, a lot of tooling to evolve around it uh, as, as more and more people do it. The struggle still right now is that as we saw, it still doesn't work for a lot of people. Uh, and so we're, we're working through that process, uh, not necessarily first, but still, that's, that's the problem I think most people are still trying to work on. Um, okay. So, um, Okay, so, so basically all, all we talked about, I'm going to recap. Progressive web apps are uh, ultimately, in this use case, we want this stuff to work when it's offline. <laughs> service workers do that. The manifest stuff isn't quite there yet, but the service workers work for everybody. Like having your thing work offline just works. Um, the, the manifest stuff isn't there yet. As we saw, iPhones trying to hide it. Um, it only it didn't. You had an S7. Somebody had an S7 um, that I would have expected to work, and it didn't work. Uh, not all the browsers support it, so that's an area that's still a struggle, and we're not quite there yet. Um, but we are we are rapidly making progress. So okay, questions? Any last minute? Yes. Well, okay, so when you're doing, if I understand the question appropriately, <sighs> progressive web apps have a, a fairly narrow use case because the reality is when, um, why is my, anyway, um, I was going to show you guys something that kind of responds to that, but this is now what I'm getting from Chrome, um, but you can't see it. 
is a fairly, fairly narrow use case because the idea of caching results and things like that doesn't always make sense, especially not if you're using like an identity server or something. The implication is you are online. Right? If you're not online, you can't do a lot of that stuff. And so somebody asked me like, if they had a, um, like a shopping cart or people could search things. Or it doesn't make sense to cache those results because they change every time you do something. Or, um, so, so it still is a narrow use case. If, if you want to dig into this, um, the, the Google developers, developers.google.com, has a progressive web app tutorial that I would love to show you full screen, but Chrome hates me today. Oh, is it? Oh, there we go, yay! Um, that walks through like all of this stuff. And we'll dig into a lot of, um, a lot deeper than I can get in, in 50 minutes. So, okay. I wanna make sure we have time. Um, if you have, oh, yes, one more question. Okay, so I feel like I do a lot, but I don't know what that means. So go for it. Gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, so yes, because here's here's the other use case for this. So think about this. I, I have a task application, and I want to complete tasks. And, and I'm building a progressive web app, which means I'm going to complete a task, and I'm going to do a post, but I'm offline. Um, so with a service worker, I can cache all that stuff. And then when I go back online, I can send it all, uh, which, which means now it's kind of even a little bit more where I can, I can do all kinds of stuff, um, offline and pretend that I'm online and then when online comes back it, it builds out and I don't know if that's exactly the same thing that you're talking about and if it's not we can talk about it more but, but the service worker being able to cache and then do more later uh, becomes very very useful when it comes to um, intermittent internet so okay so that's it for me if you have questions come talk to me otherwise you guys are free to go have a great rest of your build stuff.